Sometimes a cam sprocket grazes this area right here. It's the material right above the oil galley, the top one for the cam. And uh, I can't tell you which ones do and which ones don't, but I can tell you that this spot ground down a tad will stop it from touching. And when it touches, you know, it makes noise. I have an Urson adjustable cam timing gear set right now that is making a rubbing sound. Uh, that has to be worked out at a later date. Here we are removing old cam bearings with our CBT-300 Goodson cam bearing tool. It is rather impossible, I think, you know, to remove and replace cam bearings without the proper tool. This tool is fantastic. And the thing I like best about it is this short stubby shaft that is in the kit. I feel like it makes removing and replacing the number one cam bearing a breeze. Otherwise, you're dealing with the long rod, and it's you know you you can't do the number one with the long rod. Of course, you practice safety first, but for those who forego it, you need to protect yourself. If you're grinding anything, at a minimum, you need safety glasses, an N95 mask hearing protection, and some gloves. Here we have four different oil pans with varying characteristics. On the left here, we have a bone stock, two-piece seal, driver's side pickup, four quart. The one next to it right here is a double tab or double kick out as it is sometimes referred to. It is a Moroso 5 quart in the pan, part number MOR-20171, summit part number. We will be running this with the uh, oil temperature gauge, which has a bung that has to be welded in. As you can see on this pan, this profile right down here, being that it's a 5 quart, it's dimensionally bigger than this 4 quart. This is some of the area where they gather it, and I believe maybe maybe down in here, see the way this is here, um, and uh, it holds an extra quart. The autometer bung part number is ATM-2265, summit number, to make that happen. And uh, we use a one-piece oil pen gasket part number FEL dash o s dash three four five one zero t as in tom it's a fail pro gasket double kicks out and it's one piece with reinforcements in the bolt hole so you can't over torque them This oil pump, part number MIL18750, and this oil pump drive, part number ARP134-7901, and this oil pump pickup is specific for the Moroso 20171 5 quart oil pan. 
they say that you have to have 250 to 375 thou from the bottom of the pan to the screen. However, this measures 200 thou on our motor, so we're going to have to increase that 50 thou. This oil pan right here is a brand new 1969 302Z28 oil pan with rails in it to mate with the GM302 windage tray and it has a slosh eliminator with a driver's side dipstick This one on the right here is a um, Milodon part number MIL30901. It's a seven quart in the pan, passenger side dipstick, two piece, single kick out, low profile, and will handle 3.750 stroke. When I say two piece, I mean it takes a two piece seal, rear main seal. This right here is a crank scraper. Part number MIL-32640. And this is a Lifter Valley oil baffle. It installs under the intake manifold and they claim increases horsepower by preventing hot oil from heating the intake charge. And I believe them. That's why I bought it. Part number MIL-32610. This pickup right here uh, is Milodon or MIL-18314. And this is what we've acquired for testing on our equipment. All these parts here. Will these parts work on your build? Well, that has to be determined by you and you may have to make changes because something you purchased that you wanted to work didn't. That does happen. I only mention the possibilities here to give you fuel for thought. By now you've probably realized that there's a lot of information that you have to gather. A notebook is a good idea. I usually write, you know, uh, specs on one page, for example, you know, part numbers on page two, um, you know, sizes of parts, like quarter inch national pipe plugs, for example, or quarter inch MPT tap. Then I have a page for tools required and uh, then questions I need to ask my machine shop. Well, that's always a good, real good one. Then I have a page called Things I Liked and another called Things I Did Not Like. And I even have one called Anomalies. Those are things that are, you know, that, that deviate from what is standard, normal, or expect it. A perfect, a perfect example is this. You see this sort of deviation right here? This missing material on the 410 block? This is on the passenger side uh, water uh, pump intake. And it's just something you notice. I put that on my anomaly page because you know, suppose in three months, you know, everything's installed, it's running, you pull into the driveway and you have a leak on the right side of the car, at the front. And uh, you're going to remember that you made that note and you wrote it down. And uh, now... Uh, you didn't uh, do anything about it, let's say, and um, now you got to pop the cooling system. 
it, it, it's, it's at least several hours. And it could be 50 to 60 bucks, depending on whether the coolant is contaminated or not. But the note you jotted down could save you that pain. <laughs> pain. <laughs> By reminding you to put extra silicone in this area when doing the water pump install. Just a little thing like that can pay off big down the road.